Hey guys, so today I want to talk to you about equipment, all right? So you're starting your class for the first time, you know, you, you've marketed a bit, you've advertised a little bit, and don't go run out and buy a whole bunch of equipment. Put it on your line of credit or your credit card. Now you're in debt before you even start the class. You don't even know if it's going to take off or really what kind of, you know, part of your training is going to be popular and what you're actually going to really need. So if you're just starting out and you haven't got any equipment yet, don't get anything yet. Just think of what you could use that you already have or that you can kind of like build or make like, okay, so when I started, I started indoors. Luckily they had equipment. So, um, I did a video about choosing a location. Something to look at is the equipment that they have. Do they have weights? Um, you know, bands, bars, BOSU balls. What do they have that you can use? The gym I have has everything. I pay to rent to use that stuff, but um, some places will let you use it or maybe they won't. Don't assume you can. Make sure you ask them if you're allowed to use it, all right? So, but then when I went outdoors, I didn't have any equipment and I was like, oh crap, what, like, what should I do? But you know, you know what? You don't need to have that equipment right away. Start with body weight stuff, you know, the hill, the sand, like I mentioned when we were talking about location also. Um, but you can, you can make things, okay? So make some sandbags. I went to the hardware store and got like those like burlap kind of bags and I took a garbage bag and then I got, I bought some sand. A couple times I've snuck to the beach and got some sand. You can buy your sand, sneak your sand. I don't know, however you want to get your sand. And then you put it in the garbage bag, twist it, tie it. Then you put it in the burlap bags. If you don't put it in the garbage bags first, then it's just seeping out all the time. So a couple of garbage bags, even two, put it in there, tie it up. You got yourself a sandbag. All right. And they're kind of like cool. They're old school, kind of tough looking, you know, um, you do need to change them here and there because they will start to smell like sweat and they, you know, they can get kind of smelly. So, um, just remember to change those bags every now and then. But you can make your own sandbags. Um, that's what I did. I went to this big like trucking tire company. I forget what it was, but I went there and I said, Hey, do you have some tires you want to get rid of? And they were happy to get rid of tires. Some companies have to pay to get rid of tires. So I went there, I had a truck. Um, I got a bunch of car tires. I got some transport tires. You can get tractor tires, just kind of source in your neighborhood or your city where you can get some, uh, old used tires. Okay. I've had the same, big transport tires. I think I got like eight of them and I got about 15 little tires for about eight, nine years now. They're like, I feel like they're my kids. I've moved maybe five times different homes. I've packed the tires up, moved them with me. Um, so you've got to make sure that you have space to store this stuff. Okay. So if you're in an apartment, like, can you, where are you going to put the tires? So you got to think of that also, but tires, sandbags, um, ropes. What else, what else have I done? Um, I started out when I first bought weights, I just bought a small amount and built my way up, right? So you don't want to go into debt before you've even started your classes um, or your, your boot camp, whatever it is that you're doing, um, until you kind of know what you need, okay? So number one mistake you can do is run out and get things that you're, you're not sure you're going to even use. Because I've bought things and I haven't really even used them. So, um, you know, feel it out with your class. There's so much you can do with just your own body weight and with the elements that are there in the parks that you're at or the gyms you're in, okay? So equipment's important and you do wanna have equipment though and you do eventually wanna have things that you can build to. So starting a course without all that is fine. Do the body weight stuff, do the hill or do the, the, the groundwork in the gyms and then slowly add things in. As your class builds and you have more clients, you can afford to buy it, then go out and buy it, okay? And slowly adding pieces and it makes it exciting, all right? Um, so, Changing things up with your training is important because it'll get stale. Your clients will get tired and bored, right? You don't want to just have like the same thing all the time. You're doing the same classes with the same equipment, doing the same moves. It, that's boring. Our bodies need change. Our muscles have memory. They get used to the same thing. That your clients aren't going to get the same results. So you got to change it up with your training and your equipment. Um, we went it came to a point where I was like, you know what? Like these, these, I started hearing about these paddle boards. So I actually got paddle boards and I was like, okay, hey, we're going to do like this whole paddle board fitness class. And I'll have this trail and I'll roll it up to a beach and I can do adrenaline on the set boards they're called. And so we started that two years ago. And now we have an actual little location where we rent them out during the day. We do sunset paddles and I do training on these set boards for three months of the year. And where I live in Windsor, there's only three or four months that it's hot, 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 where you can get people out on the water. 
you could get them later, but once it's a bit cold, no one's coming out. <laughs> so that closes. So that's a little side summer business that we have, me and my husband. But um, so I was pretty proud of that kind of new uh, style of training. So you, I'm just telling you this because it's an example to think outside of the box, okay? Now you're not gonna run out and buy a bunch of set boards. I didn't do that. I mean, I've been doing adrenaline for a long time. So after building a clientele and knowing that, hey, if I start this, there'll be people. So build your business, build your name, um, the word of mouth out there in your city, the community of who you are, and then then you can, oh, my phone's again. It's my brother. Well, I'll call him black. So build your name, build what you're doing, and then, you know, as you get the equipment, then you know you're going to make use of it and you're going to be able to afford it, okay? Um, the SUP board workout is insane and it's awesome and it's something new. Uh, being a trainer in the city, all these boot camps and classes, they're always doing stuff. And if I just stay the same here, I'm just going to be that same trainer. She's doing the same classes she's always done. So you got to keep building and, and, and you know, um, growing and always doing that next new thing. Okay. So as of now, I'm the only one doing classes on the boards. Uh, that's my kind of style and uh, it's pretty cool and I love it. So get, you know, creative. Think of what you can do. Uh, maybe it's some kind of cool like beach water workout. We've done sand water training too, which is really cool. If you're, you live somewhere hot or in the summer months, do training in the sand, do training in the water, um, you know, or using bars at parks to do like, you know, a whole bar class, okay? So there's lots you can do without having to run out and buy a bunch of equipment. Just get creative and build slowly, all right? So I hope this helps with um, you talking about equipment, any questions you have or anything I didn't cover, just send me an email, okay? Have a great day, guys, and talk to you again soon.